Alrighty, alrighty. So let's get right into it. How do you ensure that you negotiate the right contract if you are picking a listing agent? This is all about it. And this is the thing is a lot of people, yes, they, they feel like they need to negotiate and they don't get a good deal unless they negotiate. This is the thing is that good agents will be able to provide the value that you can get into your brain and say, okay, this is a good person. Do I connect with this person? Because you're getting into a relationship. And this is the thing is that if you negotiate too much, that listing agent is gonna say no. If they keep on, if you keep on fighting for a purchase price that is unrealistic, that listing agent is gonna say no. I recently did that probably three or four times because right now we're in a totally different marketplace and I sit down with the owner and I say, your home is worth this and I think the agent, go watch this video, which is the six ways that real estate agents get your listing. So in other words, the real estate agent was actually trying to buy your listing. So the first one is, how do you actually hire a real estate agent? I went through it in another video. Let's just go down the basics. Number one is referrals. Referrals from people that you trust within the exact same price range. So if you're looking at a million dollar house, don't look at a rental agent. If you're looking at a million dollar house, someone that's, that's negotiating townhouses and only do townhouses probably won't take you on. As a listing agent, they'll probably give it to someone that's underneath them and then that's not who you're hiring on the, on the listing pitch. It's gonna be their intern or someone that's brand new in the business. Someone that's gonna be showing and negotiating on your behalf. Go for someone that worked with someone in a million dollar or whatever yours is, $10 million price range. Make sure that you get a referral from them. Referrals are the best way because you understand how that person works, okay? It's from a friend, a colleague, family member, whatever. How do you get the referral? The first way is obviously ask around. It's word of mouth. Whoever you work out at the gym with, whoever you go to church with, whoever you hang out with most, go there. Don't go to social media. That's not the best way. Number two is the building expert. Building expert within, obviously hiring the, the real estate agent, make sure that we're you know on the same topic. The building expert knows the neighborhood, knows the building, knows the co-op board, the condo board. They know how to market the properties. They've done it successfully in the building. So in other words, someone that has sold within the building, they don't have to, building, have to be a building expert. But for me, I've gotten pretty much all of my referrals by doing a really good job on an apartment in other words, listing it, getting the right price, and then people say, I want that for my house. I want that that ex same exact experience that that person within the building got, I want to get as well. Number three for the real estate agent is attend open houses within your price range. Because then you get to feel, and obviously you don't go in and say, I might be putting my home on the market, okay? Because then it's a totally different experience that you're gonna get. But if you go and you attend, attend open houses, you're gonna understand this is how the real estate agent actually does business because they're on the clock. They're selling someone else's price range. Attend open houses within your price range, not below, not above. And then at the end, if you like the person, say, hey, listen, I'm looking to sell. Can we meet at another time? Start with referral. Number two is a building expert. And number three is at open houses. Okay, let's go through the interview process. And the reason I wanna get through all this before I go into what to negotiate with, because like I said before, is that you're getting into a relationship. So number two, so how do you hire a real estate agent was number one. Number two is the interview process. So number one, so under that is the marketing strategy, the price point, expected time on the market. It's a bad sign if they come ill prepared. So if they don't know how long it's gonna take, if they don't know the comparables, if they don't know, and by how long it's gonna take, it, it's a direct reflection on the actual marketplace and the price that you're entering the marketplace. And the reason being is that if you come on too high, it's probably gonna sit for two and a half, three months. If you come on too low, it's gonna go at the first open house, but you might not get the best offers. If you come on exactly where it should trade at, exactly where it's probably gonna go into contract, that's the best because you have a lot of people that have been looking for a while, they look at your home and they say, this is a steal, this is a deal, this is something I wanna get involved in. You have to ask the agent those simple questions. Too salesy when they're on the interview process. You obviously get that feeling, are they pushing or are they asking questions? Are they trying to mold around your needs and your wants, your time frame, your expectations, or are they trying to put that blanket statement on you? Do they say this is what my corporate policy is or do they actually make a policy around what you want? Look for authenticity, look through, look for authenticity is do their words and actions match? Are, does their body language and words match? In other words, that, that has to do with a lot of the too salesy, transparency, watch for promises in the highest price point. So in other words, I already mentioned price point before, but if that, that's coming in with comparables to justify the price that they give. The problem is a lot of these agents, they come in with such a high price that you're like, I don't even know if you can get that, but yeah, I'll sign on. So in other words, they're buying the listing from you. 
They, if it's worth 950 or nine, say 900, and they come on, say it's 900, and they come on at a million, it's gonna sit, especially in this marketplace. You can't do that. That's buying the listing. It's very unfair to you as the, the owner, very unfair to the building, it's very unfair to everyone, even, even the agent. They're doing a disservice to everybody. Still within the, the interview process, obviously, yes, compare the comparables for the price and strategy. Over, they sometimes over promise on price and then they under deliver. They have to give quick tips maximize staging, virtual staging, regular staging, rearrange the furniture. Do they give value while on the listing presentation? Let's go into what to negotiate. Obviously commission is the first one. Commission is the, the easiest one to talk about because it's the biggest and it's kind of that, that elephant in the room, metaphorically speaking. So if they have a tiered commission structure, that's better than someone that comes in and they say 6% and that's it. There, there's times that you have to give and take. Okay, as an owner, I understand 6% sounds like a lot, but there is a massive difference between someone that says, I will do it for 3% or 4% and someone that does it at 6%. The person that does it at 6% can negotiate that 2% gap. So in other words, let me just put it into context terms. So if someone is selling your $1 million house and $60,000 is gonna to go to the 6% agent, obviously 6% of a million dollars is 60K. Someone that's doing it at 40,000 may not be able to get you the highest price because why are they offering 44% as their commission? So 6% is 60K, 4% is 40K. A 6% person, this is what I tell the owner, is that me, person that's getting paid more, I could easily make up $20,000 in negotiations. So easy to make up 20K. People think that 2% sounds like a lot. It does sound like a lot, but when it comes down to actual dollar amounts, a good agent will be able to get you that 2%. Whether that's even in your emotional stress going through an ill-prepared agent at 4% or the person that takes way too long to sell your house because they're 4% and they're just a discount broker or that person that doesn't know how to negotiate, that person that just is fumbling the board package or even a board rejection, which is the worst way. So this is, this is what I'm talking about with negotiating commission. So commission depends on the agent, depends on the price point, depends on, you know, obviously what I said before is, you know, what's their history within the building? How do you know them? Blah, blah, blah. But with the negotiating the commission, have them have it where if I get a million dollars, it's six and a half percent. If I get 975, then it's 6%. If it's 950, then it's 5.55 or you know something like that. And the compensation to the buyer's agent stays the same, but the compens compensation to the listing agent changes. So in other words, you're not touching the buyer's agent. Their compensation is exactly the same. It's all about the listing agent. It will give them an incentive to make sure they get you the best price. Negotiating the terms on the exclusive. So obviously this is the duration of the exclusive. Is it six months? Is it a year? Is it nine months? Obviously in a worse condition or in a worse uh, marketplace, it's gonna be a longer duration. I, I had someone that came up to me and they said, well, this agent will do it for three months. I'm like, okay, you know, fair enough. What price? They gave a high price and they gave a lower duration on the exclusive. So really what this agent was doing was buying the listing, then after three months saying, hey, listen, let's renegotiate for another three months because you're already involved with me. Why go to another agent? So strategically, that agent was doing such a disservice, there was no expectations being accounted for on, on their part. So essentially, I'm saying this is the price, We'll do it for six months. It's not gonna take me six months. It's gonna be a lower price than this other person. But I can guarantee you this person right here is saying three months because they're gonna come back to you in three months and say, hey, listen, let's lower the price and sign for another three months. I guarantee that's what's gonna happen. So when, when someone says, I'll do it for a month or I'll do it for two months or three months, why, why, why are you only doing it for that short time frame? Well, you know, I know I can sell it. No, 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 they're probably gonna come back and wanna get a renewal for another three or five months. Okay, that's how they get their six months. Be careful of that. So when it's a tougher market or if it's a higher price point, so in other words, say $20 million house, it's probably gonna take nine months. You know, if, it, if it's like a shaky marketplace or there's a lot of townhouses on the, on the market, obviously that's totally different. Negotiate the marketing. So the marketing essentially means that you know where they're gonna be listing it, when they're gonna be listing it, is there any sponsorships? So I wrote right here, where is it gonna be listed? Yes, I understand it's gonna be listed to brokers and street easy, where else? Guaranteed professional everything. There's a lot of people that say, here, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do it, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll put your home on the market, but they don't have professional floor plan, 
or pictures or description. They don't host open houses. You have to get that all guaranteed in writing. You promised to do me that, to do this. What's your accountability towards that? Guarantee, professional, everything. Photos, video, floor plan, description. Are you gonna feature it anywhere? I would say the two best places to feature it, number one is Street Easy. Do that for two weeks because that's the best time frame. The second place to feature it is socially. So in other words, you put a dot on the building and then within a mile radius, you just drown a thousand dollars and you pump out the video or the listing to all the people within that area. Moving on, the top takeaway, what you know? What what else are you going to do? You could have a glossy brochure. You could be showing it, uh, say, two open houses a week. Are you going to be doing the showing? This all has to do with marketing because when you actually put put it on the market, it's really hard for you, the owner, after immediate say the first open house to be like, what's the feedback? We'll, we'll get into that. P.S. Don't worry about if it's going to be featured in the company magazine or if it's going to be on their storefront or their firm website. People don't come through there. Just be cautious when someone says, well, it's going to be on the front of my, my, you know, my building, which is a storefront on Broadway. Nobody looks at that. Everyone looks online. Everything's online. Additional terms to negotiate is who's going to be showing it, how often are they going to be showing it, and who will be negotiating my price? Is it you, an intern, someone else on your team? Who's going to be doing all this? Discuss the staging. Who's going to be paying for the staging? Who's going to be paying for the virtual staging if it's needed? If there's furniture that needs to be taken away, in other words, there's too much furniture, is it going to be put into storage? Who's going to be paying for that? Who's going to be taking away the furniture? Who's going to be paying away for that disposal? And what's the budget going to be? So that, that has to be a... And, and the last thing about what to negotiate is also providing feedback. You have to be able to negotiate. When am I going to hear feedback? How many showings are you doing? What are they saying? Are they talking about the price? Are they talking about the lighting? Are they talking about the area? Do they not like the staging? Do they think there's too much furniture? What is it? Do they not like the color of the bathroom or something like that? So always ensure that you're going to be getting feedback at least once a week, which is usually on a Friday for us. Setting the schedule is the last thing, which essentially means when are we going to do the staging? When are we going to do the photography, the listing publication? When is the newsletter going to go out? The social media announcement? mailing in the neighborhood, first open house, get the schedule negotiated up front on the listing appointment before you sign anything because once it's signed, that listing agent is going to go, thank you, and walk away. Not all of them, but a lot of them, they say, okay, I got the listing, now I'm going to do it my way. No, no, no. You negotiate that on the listing presentation. And of course, as always, I always say, you know, if this doesn't work out at your price, say, say myself, I, you know, put it, I want it at 960, but the owner wants it at 995, you know, price range. I always say, okay, great. We'll put it at 995, but after 17 days, which is two open houses, we'll drop it to my price. Is that fair? Fair enough? Great. So in other words, you put in a price drop within, or a price improvement, the best way to do it, is there's a price improvement already negotiated into the contract within 17 days. If we don't get the price that you want, we'll go to the price that I want. Because otherwise it'll linger, and then people say, why is this on the market for two months, three months? Why is there a price reduction? Blah, blah, blah. It looks really ugly. So if you guys have any questions, obviously leave in the comments below. As always, shoot me an email, charles at boatinston.com. Tomorrow we're actually going to be talking about the February market report, which is going to be totally different. Blow your mind away. Highly recommend you guys check that out. Have an amazing day. Talk to you guys soon.